and then to produce any creative piece of work that expresses those values. So it could be a poem, a play, a short story, a dance. We then ask them to send it to us along with a short description summarising what their piece expresses and why the values that they're expressing are important to them. We give out monthly prizes and give out annual prizes and we judge the entries based on how well they express their own values and the ability of those pieces of work to encourage others to consider what's most important in their lives. So that's the competition. The other thing that the John Brown Award is, is, is an online platform. We take all the entries that we get from our entrants and we put them online. And we categorise them across five categories. Those being self-direction, relationships, well-being, culture and humanity. What we aim to do is give the user of our website an in-depth kind of journey, a snapshot of what young people in Scotland today are valuing, as a means to engender debate and discussion around what we all value. So, before we go any further, let's look at a definition of values. So this is taken from an organisation called Common Cause, it being Values represent our guiding principles, our broadest motivations, influencing the attitudes we hold and how we act. Our guiding principles. I'd like to ask you now a question, and I'd like you to consider the answer uh, just, just yourselves. The question is, what do you value? Essentially, we ask this question of our engines, and, and we ask for an answer in, a, in, a, in any creative, in any creative means, in any creative medium. And I'm going to show you some of those responses that we've got just in a bit. But I'd now, I'd like to ask you a second question. And if you would, I'd like to I'd like you to put your hands up. How many people here have been asked that question before? What do you value? Okay, cool. So it looks like about half the audience. We think that's a really important question. What do you value? And so basically we we'll want more and more people to consider that themselves and of the people around them. So I'm going to show you four entries that we've got to the John Byrne Award. And those entries each represent uh, a theme that I've seen kind of coming in from all of our entries. We've got about 700 on our website right now. They all in some way relate to anxiety. And so I'm going to try and kind of pull apart where I see anxiety coming into these entries. We get a lot of entries from young women essentially rejecting the sexualization of, of themselves and of their bodies. So this is a piece by a young woman called Mary Lev. It's called Self-Destructing Society. She has painted an idealized portrait of herself and has essentially taken a knife to it and vandalize it. My interpretation of this piece of work is that Mary values equality. She values her own ability to construct her image, her public image, and to have control of that. And she values her independence to be who she wants to be. You could say that in one way society is infringing upon her ability to express her values in the way that she wants to do. We get a lot of entries from young people expressing a lot of gratitude uh, for the supportive and loving relationships that they have with their family. And kind of related to that, expressing a lot of anxiety when those relationships are under threat. 
This piece, that's tumor by Mary McPhail, shows her own dad holding his tumor out and open in his hand. In a very kind of literal way, the cancer is impinging on Mary's value of her own sense of security within her family unit. It's also impinging on the health of her father and presumably health of herself and of her family is something that she holds dear. Zen Bitch by Lily Garga. So, again, a lot of our entries look back at a time in, in, in the entrance life that was difficult, but that, with the benefit of hindsight, meant something to them and perhaps changed the way they think about themselves and, and, and people around them. So, Lily went down to London, started working in the fashion industry, and she, it, it didn't work out for her. What the fashion industry was asking her to do, she wasn't happy with. So she came back to Scotland, and this embroidery that she's done here shows all the objects that kind of related to how she felt about her situation down in London. But again, it's around these objects kind of signify uh, her own kind of independence, her own feeling of freedom and trait of freedom to be who she wants to be. And that was under threat. The last piece I want to show you is in relation to mental health and anxiety in explicit terms. Probably around a quarter of the entries that we get examine mental health. This piece by Katrina Fraser, it's called An Introvert Panic, it's actually a self-portrait. In Katrina's description she tells us that she suffers from social anxiety and that she paints intricate paintings as a way to be close with other people but also as a way to, to avoid the fear of the unknown. Those holes that you see on the, on the portrait, those are, those are actually bullet holes. She took a shotgun and then yeah, shot a portrait. Clearly, she values her own mental health. But she also values to agree her ability to interact with the people around her. And if her condition is preventing her from doing that, then clearly that induces a degree of anxiety. So those are four entries. Um, I'd now like to pass you over to Robert, who won one of our awards in 2017. He's going to tell you a little bit more about his work. Hi. So uh, when Nana asked me to do this talk, I was like, uh, no. Uh, why would I do that? It's like the most like nerve-wracking thing you can think of all these people sitting there, but I was like, you know, maybe. So he took me out for coffee, he's a nice guy, and I was like, you know, it could be good, saw the benefits, talk about my work, that sort of thing, meet people. Um, so I went home and I started to Google it, you know, as you do, what to say on your TED talk, what not to say on your TED talk, uh, things to do when you're speaking, that sort of stuff. And this just started to make me really, really nervous. I thought, I don't know if I can do this. I might have to email him, it's gonna be pretty awkward. But, uh, uh, but then I just thought, no, you just gotta do it. And I was kind of procrastinating, but I just practiced and repeated, did it again and again and again. And very, very slowly, very slowly, it started to feel fun. And I started to feel, uh, think about this process of just repeating and doing it again and again, and it's similar to what I do in my work. So, uh, as um, Niall said, I'm a student at the Glasgow School of Art. I'm in the painting and printmaking in my second year, and I get the same feeling of feeling really nervous and scared when I, I'm about to make some work. Um, so, a good example of this is a project that I did uh, last year. Um, with another artist. Well, I was sitting in my studio and I thought, I don't know what to make. I can do all this stuff. I can do drawings, paintings, this sort of thing. Um, so I just had to do something and I made a baby. Not real baby. A fake, kind of weird looking baby. Uh, who gave it a body, got kind of weird. Um, and I was like, why did I make this baby? And I was like, yeah. Oh. And then I was thinking about it more and I thought maybe it's a manifestation of fear because at the age of 19, just going into university, having a real baby is like really not what I want to happen. It's not sort of ideal, you know. 
So to kind of explore this theme, uh, this anxiety that I had, me and another artist, we took, uh, well we gave it a name actually, so it's called Percy. It's a great name. Uh, and we started to do performances with it, so we took it to Tesco, took it shopping. If you start to feel anxious about yourself, like I can't even look after myself, let alone babies, like baby food is really quite expensive. And then we kind of uh, took it to um, clothes shops and found these weird clothes so you can uh, so you can make your baby have dope on its hat or something. Um, and it was just like, oh, what is what is happening? Um, and this work um, kind of took on arms and legs and it snowballed and it culminated in an exhibition in Glasgow. Uh, so I made 50 babies, uh, cast them all. Um, and I made prints as well, oh, they are. Uh, and some prints and things. And um, this kind of looks at sperm donors and the models behind that. But let's talk about the work, but more about this process of feeling really anxious, not knowing what to do, just doing something a bit weird, and it starts to have this sort of snowball effect, and weird things start to happen. Um, so I got asked to talk today uh, because I participated in the John Byrne Award, so I would upload something every month, um, and they had sort of broad themes of anxiety. So uh, this is the work I made in high school. Um, and when I was in high school in my free blocks, I would go to the support department and help out. And I noticed that anxiety was something that really hung over a lot of these uh, kids. And it was something that was really difficult in their lives every day. And this started to inform the work a lot. So although um, it's me, I use myself, it's not about me, it was really about them. Um, I kind of thought about the idea of being alone in a crowd for a sort of repeat, or the metaphor of erosion, of how people sort of get beat down, and that sort of thing. The John Brown Award has been really helpful in my development. Like, I make a lot of things and I often don't know why, so it was really good to have something to aim for every month, but also something to write about, um, and just try and like, verbalise what you're actually thinking. Um, so. But sometimes um, I started to come across these issues where my work wouldn't quite fit with the values. Values are really difficult to think about and sometimes they just wouldn't work together. And it started to bring up questions of what was the work really about and the integrity of the work. So I would put works up like this where I wouldn't use one of the values and be a bit of a rebel. Um, so because values are really difficult to speak about. Lovely segue in. Values are really difficult to talk about, so I'd like to do that. Uh, this diagram shows 59 values. Um, the researchers have shown that most people across most parts of the world value. So that's an important point. Values are universal. Within this diagram, we can identify at least three different dynamics that are going on. The first one, we're going to call the engagement effect. If I engage you guys in thinking about or doing, say, a daring topic, right, we have daring up there under the stimulation values, the top left in the red. If I engage you in thinking about a daring topic, or I'm engaging, engage you in a daring activity, we'll all start to value being daring more in the short to medium term. There's a third, there's a second dynamic that's going on here, and it's called the bleed over effect. So we're engaging in a, in, a, in a daring activity or thinking about it. Without mentioning the self-direction values or the enjoyment values, things like independence, variation in life, and enjoyment in life, the ones all around daring, you'll start to value those things more as well. So the values on this diagram are arranged randomly. The closer one value is to another, the more closely it is related in, in the human psyche. So if you have someone who values being daring, they're very likely to value uh, freedom, independence, variation in life, enjoyment in life. The third dynamic that I'd like to talk about is the seesaw effect. It's fairly similar to the engagement effect, but the exact opposite. So again, we're thinking about a daring activity. Without saying anything about values that are completely unrelated to it, things in the traditional values, like moderation, duty, detachment, devotion, you'll start to value those things less without mentioning them. This has implications, I think, for all of us, really. 
for us as an organization to work with young people, certainly, but for all of us. We live in a society today where we're bombarded with lots of messages from all over the place. If they're engaging us in thinking about things that maybe we don't value, then that's going to create a tension. And maybe it's not, a, it's not a healthy tension, but there's going to be a talk there pulling us. And that could be one way in which anxiety needs comes into our life. And so the aim of the John Byrne Award is to really get people talking about values so that they can come to a greater understanding of what meaningful means for them, what meaningful life means to them, and therefore hopefully lead a more meaningful life. Thank you.